I believe in the I believe in the I believe in the I believe in This is the come up show where that feel good music lives real recognize real it's your boy Cheddar we're in Toronto we are at the Rivoli we are at the Jonestown 3 the dreams over album release party it's out right now go get it go download it and th since these guys are ridiculous I'm, I'm not sure if you've seen our previous interviews before they're kind of funny I let them introduce themselves I'm decisive I'm Moonshine from the claws and the roars of the vegetable monsters plotting behind a closet door Barbed wire border in a box spring Bear traps wait in a pajama drawer I whistle So tell us how has the past maybe a year been for you? Yeah, the last year has been really good Yeah, we did Jonestown 3 We did Asian Elvis and I got a Juno nomination So yeah How are you feeling that this is you've been nominated for the third time but still haven't won it? How do you feel about that? Always the brides may he's Right? Right? Always the bridesmaid. But that's fine. Because it's still an honor to be nominated, right? Let's keep it real right now. Jonestown 3 is officially out. You said you said yourself. You guys, you guys didn't think you would top Jonestown 2, but you've done it. This is your best work to date. If you listen to the, like, if you listen to Jonestown 3, which this will probably come out in a couple of weeks, because Nick Pulver Andrews is gonna edit it. Shout out to Nick. Nick Pulver Andrews. But like, you guys are probably to hyphenated names, because names, you'll probably hear it already, and you guys will probably be like, oh man, Jonestown 3 was like almost perfect. Like the lyrics and like the vocals and lyrics, they were like so good. Like the beats were like okay, like they were like cool, like they were there, but the lyrics were so yeah. No, it was more like the beats were awesome, and then like the vocals were like, yeah, these are cool. Like these vocals are cool. Well, no, but like when I listen to it, I'm I'm like I'm like oh man, the vocals these are so fucking a dude. Like when I hear, it, I'm like holy fuck, bro, these vocals are so fucking bro. But the beats like the beats are okay, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. This is the last of the Jonestown series. It is also, you've said, the last chapter of Decisive. Uh, are you quitting the rap game, son? Yeah. What's going on? Done, bro. That's it, bro. You just experienced the last episode of Growing Pains. Right there. The last episode of... of what's the last episode of, of Fresh Prince? When fucking Will shut all the lights out. The last episode of The School's Out of Degrassi. When, when Snake goes, at least I didn't spend my summer fucking Tessa Campanelli. Dude. And then, and, 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 and Caitlyn. He fucked up Joey, man, because he was fucking Tessa Campanelli, guys. Yeah. Exactly. And, and then Caitlyn came in and goes, you're fucking Tessa Campanelli? That's how she talked, she wasn't that good at talking. You're fucking Tessa Campanelli? And Joey's like, it's not what you think. And Lucy got in a car to go get more beer and got in an accident and fucked up Lucy. And Lucy had tinfoil over her eyes because she was fucking blind. Taking over. These guys are too ridiculous. We're trying to have a serious interview here. I'm trying to get some information now, and these guys are not participating right now. What's going on? What? Yo, like, you know what I mean? What's going on right now? Fame and fortune, bro. You changed. You changed, bro. <laughs> this guy interviewed. This one interview with Jay fucking Electronica. And it gets on BT.com and fucking boom. Fame and fortune. I was on BT before. No, yeah, you want yeah. no you want, no you want. Bring it back, bring it back. There's so many fucking things in my way up here. Hey. That was really ruined everything. You're exploring? You're exploring a different thing? I was talking to your fiance, shout out to Mel. You know what I mean? She's saying he's doing a huge project, so come on, what's going on? And especially in the past few years, how hard you went and the momentum that you're gaining in your career, you're about to take shit over. Why would you? T 
I ain't taking shit over, bro. If I was gonna take anything over, we would've took it over four albums ago. We've been in this guy, been making fucking amazing shit for fucking five years. Any, 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 any real MC, like any real MC who you don't have to, you know, nowadays you all know you don't have to sell a million records and leave to be successful. And I, I, I paid attention to artists, obviously, and the average. Artists, maybe it takes them 10 to 15 years to truly be successful. It's a very long time. It is a lot of hard work, a lot of blood and sweat and tears, but if they are persistent and they're making good shit. Sooner or later, they will get there. That's that's what I believe. That's a good statistic. Yeah. I've been doing it since 95. Yeah. You know how long that is? You've been going every year since 95, though? Not every year. But like more in the past five years than most people have. I stuffed my clothes in a Samson night, Lloyd Christmas underneath the Aspen sky. Are you frustrated? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I am. I am, to be honest. I'm very frustrated. And that's like, that's not even a joke. It gets very frustrating. Mm -hmm. You were here tonight. You saw this. I, don't, I just don't understand why it can't be. I did Peter Bro last night. Mm -hmm. There were six people. And I come here and I do this. But why can't it be like this everywhere? Maybe because I don't, sorry. Maybe because I'm not signed to Def Jam. I sent them my demo tape. A and R from Def Jam in America emailed me one day because he we have a mutual friend who's a lawyer, who's a fucking nice guy, and I like him. He lives in Los Angeles, and he sent me an email and he said, "Hey man, apparently you're the this guy told me you're the guy to check out." This is a true story. Okay. And then I was all nervous and I said, "What am I gonna say to this guy?" So I wrote back and I said, "Here's my shit," and never heard back from him again. So I'm like, story of my life. I don't know, maybe I'm not Malcolm, Malcolm Lamore. Malcolm Lamore. That guy's doing good though, he's good. Yeah. But like, he's doing the same shit I've been doing for five years. But maybe you need a publicist. I don't have a publicist, we're broke. So it is frustrating. Half asleep in an alley, feeling dope sick. Coke nose bloody, hobo hungry. Torso chubby, walking John Goodman's footprints, lied to by every crystal ball I've ever looked in. Moonshine, do you share this frustration? Because you are an artist yourself, you are a producer, you're an engineer, you do it all. So, like, you've been doing your thing as well, too, but I... He's saying he's gonna take a break, but I don't see you taking a break. Do you feel that same way as well, you, as in your career? Yeah, no, I, absolutely, yeah. And, I mean, we sort of look at the position we're in as this weird kind of middle ground where, to, like, the core hip-hop audience, we're a little too left field, like the stuff we make. So the core hip hop audience is like, yeah, it might not be your taste, but it's cool. Check it out. And the problem is on the other side is the non hip hop audience still looks at us as hip hop artists. So we're stuck in this weird middle ground where we can't get beyond that. And the people that we are surrounded by are not giving the support that we would like to get. So. Of course we're frustrated, so we're gonna try new shit. We're gonna switch it up. Try something else. We're gonna we're gonna challenge ourselves and try to make some different music that we've never made before. But not decisive music, not moonshine music. Yeah. It's done. It's over. Yeah. Nobody wants to hear the fat boy whine. They just wanna hear the frat boy rhyme. Feeling safe and cuddled up with what frat boy writes. But frat boy sucks and the fat boy's nice. When it's the album just came out today for the people who are just seen this. What what if some crazy shit happened from the from this album? I hope so. I would love that. That would be amazing, but I'm not getting my hopes up because yeah. I've got my hopes up six other times when I felt this way about my records. Like and you people can watch that and say, Oh, he's just being an arrogant douche. But no, if you're not if you don't stand behind your own shit. What's the point of putting out? I thought the book was fucked. No, actually, I was very insecure with the book because that was the first time I ever did anything like that. So I was just like, who's going to like this? But then people did. So then, you know, confidence slowly started to build. And at this point now, I think I'm, we're in the like top of our game. We knocked this album out in like three weeks. We go to this. We, we both have jobs. You know, five o'clock, we meet each other at fucking 
Dundas and we get on the streetcar, we buy submarine sandwiches and we sit in his living room and just make these fucking songs. That's all it is. Like I know artists from this country that haven't even put out albums yet. We knock out shit. And, and it would be different if they're like, yeah, you put out so, mu so much music, but it sucks. But it doesn't suck. It's like it's crushing everything. And not in a, yo, I'm a rapper, I rap better than this guy. Nah, man, our shit crushes everything. And like, you know, I see guys, when I got nominated for The Last Juno, there were some heartbroken rappers that were like, oh man, how's he getting nominated again? I can fucking tell you why, because I bust my ass. Just because you put out one record over fucking dub plates, you know, like, don't talk to me on that shit. Because I, you know, I put out so much music, it's showing. I fucking bust my ass doing a fucking shows every fucking week. So, you know, you either don't like the music and that's cool, or you don't like me and that's cool, but you can't say anything about our work ethic. We fuck and we've gotten better each and every fucking time. Hopefully something crazy happens. I hope when this interview comes out, our lives have changed and we can look back at this interview and be on some, holy fuck, bro, we can laugh at this now. We'll be on the solid gold ship fucking throwing money at, <laughs> at fucking dolphins. But chances are it won't happen. Even if it changes in the smallest bit, it'll be a success. But like we have done this year in, year out, and we are in the same position that we were in. And people talk about you grind and like it's going to grow and you do this and you do that and it grows. And we do that day in and day out. We work our asses off and we push ourselves to create this music that is, is better every time we do it. And we're still here. We're still right here in the same spot. We don't get support from our own industry. There, like there's nothing happening. People don't want to fucking make anything happen and okay. I mean they, they can support what they want to support but I mean if you ask if we're frustrated obviously we are we're, we're here doing this and we're in the same spot I don't want to dwell on this because I gotta I gotta yeah. go but it's like you know what I want to end with yeah he's gotta get a hot dog my wife's gotta wake up at six in the morning but it's like I have kids fucking tattooing my shit my lyrics on their fucking skin that's a fucking trip, bro. Like to get it, to wake up one day, one morning, and on Facebook there's a kid with "If I Live to See Tomorrow" written across his chest. Like I look at that, and it's like I almost cried seeing that shit, cause I'm like, what the fuck is that? You know, that's like next level shit. But yet I have not got one fucking call from a label or an agent or a fucking. I have my agency and I have my label, Urbnet. But like the majors aren't even. You know, bro. But come, it's just like, but and, and that's and then I see other guys in the fucking scene that aren't doing shit and they're fucking getting groomed, you know? And it's like, yo, we're fucking right here. You know, not that signing to a major is gonna change my fucking life, but still, the fact is no one's even fucking contacting. No one, and you know, that's, it's gotta suck. If you're fucking working your ass, if, you, if you're still making fucking interviews, bro, I met you five years ago, we fucking, we were doing shit. Let's say you're still getting 10 fucking views and you're, look at how much work you put into your shit. Your fucking whole game has stepped up, the quality stepped up, the editing step, stepped up, the visuals stepped up, your fucking radio show's on point, you're the fucking musical director at your fucking school. But let's say none of that happened to you, bro, five years later, how are you gonna feel? I'd obviously be frustrated and I'd say well, it's, what something's not working and try to yeah. switch up the game. Yeah. So, Here we are. yo, but you're, uh, you, got, you, you guys said they're not making music as decisive as Moonshine, but music will still be made but might not be hip hop. Is that what we can be confirmed on at least? Yeah, who knows? We don't know. We're just going to challenge ourselves because we've done this and we've hit the ceiling. Like, there's no way that we can make better hip hop music than we're making. We're making really good music and there's a certain audience that is just attaching itself to it, but. It, like we're limited at the same time, so we want to we want to step outside of that and see what else we can come up with. Well, I'm glad to hear that at least because we don't want you to stop making some, any type of music. You know what I mean? Any last words to the people out there? Because you guys dropped a fucking bomb right now. You know what you just did? This is gonna be on YouTube. It's gonna be crazy. You just any last words that you want to say? Check out Jonestown Three, and if you love it, talk about it. Tell people about it. That's it. So I, I got to thank because the, there have been people that are with me that were with me since the book and you the, you guys are the people that fucking keep this fucking train rolling so I'm nothing without you guys and thank you all and I hope you love Jones Town 3 and I hope you love what else we do. Later on. Um, I'm excited to see what our next interview is going to be like on the next episode on the Come Up Show where that feel the music lives and we recognize we like boy Chet Peace. Small town in the rear view.
you roll both windows down turn the radio up we sing off key with the am to the pm living in a dream where love is all we need and us is all we have